Someone said that Spurs, hold on, what, you lot didn't get European football? What happened? Oh, thank God we didn't get European football. If, if ever a club isn't equipped, um, <laughs> isn't equipped to deal with European football next season, it's Tottenham. Um, but yeah, look, we, we had a we had a horrible ending to the season. Uh, Ryan Mason, who knew? Turns out he's not very good at, uh, at football management. So um, <laughs> it is what it is, Rance. And, and today mm. we've got the whole Spurs fans crying, burning books of Pochettino. That he's a he's a traitor. It's it's never dull. Jo- join join the Spurs community, Rance. It's never dull. Mm-hmm. But but so who ended up getting that that um, seventh spot? Then what happened? Villa. Uh, so uh, it was between Spurs and Villa, and we needed Villa to to draw or lose, and we needed to win. But they beat Brighton, so uh, so they took seventh place. Oh, oh! So you ended up finishing eighth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Respectable, respectable eighth place finish in the Premier that's League. All, that's all right. Arsenal done it twice. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. now nah, it's all right. There's no shame in that, man. You know what I mean? There's no shame in that, man. They beat you to that as well. So. Yeah, no, yeah, that's crazy, bro. Eighth in the league. Yeah, look, Rans, I'll be really honest with you. I've said this all season. I I feel like a lot of people from the outside looking in look at Spurs and think that we've got a better better group of footballers than we've actually got. Sure. And the problem is you scratch the surface past Harry Kane and, and there really, really isn't a lot there that you can rely on. Um, and, you know, I think like Benton Court, is our third highest goal scorer, and he's not played football since January. <laughs> he's been injured yeah. for the last the last four months or whatever. So it, it just shows you how overly reliant we are on one man. And um, and now he's about to be the subject of every transfer conversation. This oh summer, yeah, that so. that saga is gonna drag. Do you know what I mean? That saga is gonna drag. Yeah. If he ends up leaving or ends up staying, shit's going to the final day of the window. You know it already, in it. Like it's going to be a long summer. Harry Kane in the papers every single day, linked to this team, linked to that team. You yeah. already know what's coming. Like it's never if even if he does leave, it's not going to be a straightforward process. It's going to be drawn out. It's going to be a deadline day move. You already know it. Even if it's agreed, they're going to drag it all the way out. Do you, do you reckon it's got the uh, the Berbatov vibes? Do you, do you remember that deal, yeah. Rance? When the last day of the window, you took Berbatov from us and we got Fraser Campbell back the other way. <laughs> bro, bro, like, it's mad, isn't it? Like, like, bro, listen, I don't think Levy's going to allow that, but I feel uh, like Levy's going to probably sign his replacement, yeah, or replacements before he allows him to go. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to be one of them things where the deal might be agreed, but he's going to make... He's gonna make whoever it is wait until the final, final moment. What do you mean? We've got we've got Richard, we've got Brazil's number nine, mate. He's a 30 goal a season, man. He's coming in. Hey, bro, to be honest, like to be completely honest, yeah. I would like to see Richarlison in the nine because like he hasn't, I don't think he's been given a fair shake at um at Spurs. Like he playing him on the left hand side, like come on, man. Like that's not his position, it- isn't it? I feel that if, if you're going to give Richarlison a go as the number nine, actually, scrap that. If anybody's going to come in and replace Harry Kane as the number nine, what we're going to have to do immediately, Rance, is buy a playmaker to play behind him. Because mm. at the moment, Kane does both jobs. Sure. And and if you put Richarlison in, he, he's not going to have anyone feeding him at all. You know, because like Sun and Kulu aren't guys to get to the byline and whip in crosses. No. You know, they're, they're more less cutting and run at defenders type rather than you know rather than old school wingers who would get the ball across so we we would we would need a I, I'm no chance getting we would need a Madison we would need a, a an Odegaard that ilk of player to mm. play in the hole so um maybe Pep will loan us um Alvarez for a year maybe yeah that ain't gonna happen yeah you know, no, like that. that ain't gonna happen but <laughs> I know I you're know. right you do need a creative midfielder if you got Madison in mm. Madison would definitely add some creativity to a team that completely lacks it without Harry Kane in it. And then I don't know, genuinely like, it's like, where do you go to get a better striker than Richarlison? Yeah. That's going to cost less than 70, 80 million, bruv. Like the market is wild right now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And especially teams knowing that you're armed with the Harry Kane money, you're getting taken to the cleaners, bro. Like don't, don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think I think the difficulty we've got now as well is 
Because they, we've talked about this loads of times, Rance, because there's so few strikers across the world now that are actually mm. capable of, of getting you that 20 goal a season. It's not just Spurs that will need a striker. You you look, I mean, but Bayern Munich, since Lewandowski's gone, yeah, they won the league, but they, they're, they're lacking an out and out striker. Yeah. Benzema's 30. Six. 35 or something 35 36 yeah yeah, yeah. So you've got them did need a striker and holland's che- not available right now chelsea need a striker man united yeah. need a striker you know what i mean like if you go across europe mm. napoli will probably need to replace osserman if he if he moves so it's gonna need to be a magnificent bit of recruitment and scouting uh from our director of football oh Sorry, I forgot. We don't have a director of football. So, <laughs> it's, um, look, I, I'd, I'd be look. I'll tell you a player I'd look at. I'd look at the guy at um, uh, Atalanta. Is it Holland? Yeah, Holland, Holland, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's what Spurs need to do now. We need to try and try and find a gem before they're, you know, we need to unearth them rather than try and buy them when they're fully formed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a good player, man. I'll take him at Manchester United as well. He's yeah. got a lot of good, um, he's got a lot of good fundamentals that can be built on. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, 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 look Rance, it's going to be a really long summer. I've said this all along. Kane's got one year left on his contract, right? Mm. One year. If the guy turns around and says, I want to leave, uh, but I will give you one more year and I'm not signing a contract, Spurs have to sell. We have mm. to. You can't, you can't keep him. If he signs a new contract on the other side, I also really question this man's ambition as a footballer. Sure. I'm not questioning his ability as a footballer, mm. but you, you've got to question a man that wants to stay at this absolute horror show of a football club. For sure. So, you know, I, I probably there, I haven't given him a win. You know, it's not really a win-win situation for him there, is there? But it... it I mean, if I'm, if you're him, right? There's no win if you're staying at Spurs after the season they've had. Like, no right. European football. They're not going to have a great transfer window because there never is loads of money. So they're not going to be able to bring him a lot more quality to even build around him. You can't pro- promise Harry Kane anything. You don't have European football. There's not going to be a big budget. Um, you don't even have a manager at, at this point. Like, what can you what can you promise him? You can't pro- yeah. promise him anything. Yeah. And like exactly. someone said, for him to score 30 goals in a team that finished eighth in the league, yeah, that he can't be wasting any more of his time. He doesn't have a lot of time left. And you know that his body's not going to hold up for too much longer, man. Like he needs he needs to at least um, be at a club that um, can at least potentially help him win something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, I, I, I think that um, how much do you think they will sell him for? Look, I, I it's a tough one, right? For the, the, the problem you've got is, and I know everyone probably thinks that their chairman is a tough negotiator, but Daniel Levy, I think, mm. is it has got that reputation. And if Daniel Levy is going to let go of Spurs' one and only world class footballer, <laughs> it's it's not going to be cheap, even with one year. So I reckon you're looking at about ninety. Yeah. I reckon the I reckon the number will need to start with nine, and it won't be nine million. Um, yeah. I think it will need to be ninety to a hundred, and I think teams will pay it because normally you buy a plan ninety to a hundred million. There's a risk attached. I don't care whoever gets him, Newcastle, Man U, right? There's no risk to Harry Kane in the Premier League. There, there's there, no, no risk there's none. It. There's none. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, even his injury record seems to not be as bad as it used to be. Yeah, he's never injured anymore. It's strange. Mm. I thought it would get worse as he got older, mate. But um, look, it's I, I, I suppose it's it's all going to be Daniel Levy wheeling and dealing. If he does let him go for ninety to hundred million, it will be look. Can we maybe can we get someone coming back the other way? Um, not necessarily a striker, but some players. Um, but if this is going to happen from a Spurs fan perspective, I'd want it to happen now. I'd want it to happen, you know, June. Not, not, not last day, not last day, and we see, uh, mm. we see Harry Kane pulling up to the Man United training ground, you know, and yeah, so we, we, we'll see, we'll see, but I reckon ninety odd million. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, and you got to think there's this is going to be an interesting window. Obviously, there's rumours of Neymar going out on loan, Messi leaving PSG as well. Obviously, Mad- Madison and Tielemans got relegated, so they'll be mm. on the move. 
yeah, Pochettino's going to get rid of loads of people. Like, yeah, yeah. this is crazy. Obviously, Brighton and the, um, the managers come out and said that Caicedo and um, McAllister will leave. And that's Brighton's... Um, that's the way they do things. So there's no chance that they're going to stay. They're going to move them on. Yeah. It's crazy, bruv. You know what I mean? It's actually crazy. This summer is due to... Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting one. It's going to be mad. I mean, if you look at it, look at those two players in um, in Casado and McAllister. Yeah. They, they're, they're talking about, what is it, 70 million? Is it McAllister to Liverpool or 60 million? Well, both of them like are that. worth at least 70 million in today's right. market because I think Casado is better than McAllister. And how much did they pay for both of them combined? <laughs> I mean, look, I, I think that the, the difficulty is going to be everyone's going to strengthen again. Um, yeah. I think... The, the big question is for Casado. Where does Casado go? If I'm Chelsea, if I'm Pochettino, I'm asking the board to buy me him to play alongside Enzo and Yagate. And mm. I'm looking at that middle three and going, oh, I'm having a bit of that. And then I've got Nkunku mm. coming back in. They'll buy a centre forward. Now all of a sudden you're going, hang on, this isn't a bad team with a good yeah, manager. Um, but Casado, what? Chelsea, Arsenal, anyone else you can see going in at 70, 80 million for Casado? Just them two, probably. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hectic window, which is great for YouTube, right, Rance? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Listen, gonna hey, listen, brilliant. we're gonna we're we're gonna be there all the way through. There's there's no two ways about it, man. But I think, I think the Harry Kane situation is gonna be the biggest one. I think that that will that will determine that will determine what kind of career he's gonna have. I feel like it's now or never. Mm. for Harry Kane it's like if he doesn't leave now he's not leaving in my opinion do you know what I mean because next year's too late yeah and he, run, he runs the risk as well I mean if if he did stay a year and Levy would keep him which I can't see happening because Levy's an accountant that likes money what if you know he stays next year you you, you rupture your ligament 100% right, bro, you rupture like... your ligament and the older you get the harder it is to come back from those types of injuries so mm -hmm. he, He's got a big decision. And listen, I, I'll, I'll just say this from a Spurs fan point of view. I like to think I'm pretty level-headed. If Harry Kane hands in a transfer request, we say, well done, mate. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your career. Mm. Rather than, oh my God, I can't believe he's left. Um, but hey, it, look, Kane um, can go anywhere. I, I, I'm seeing fans from other clubs saying they wouldn't take Kane in their team. And I'm like, come on, this is... This is this is crazy. You're taking Harry Kane in your team. Oh, come on, bank, bro. No, nah, there's fans that there's my United fans that wouldn't take Neymar. So I understand. I understand the Harry Kane stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like these guys are idiots. You yeah, know, like, oh, that, but like Harry sure. Kane ain't, ain't, wasn't my first choice for my United, yeah. But based on the style that I saw the manager playing, but <laughs> listen, that guy fucking scores goals, isn't it? Like, let's be honest. Yeah, man. Listen, and, and I think in, in look. You know, Harry Kane as well has had so many managers at Spurs that have all played so many different styles of football that he's not going to struggle to adapt to any, mm. type, you know, any any different style. And he's he's super intelligent. He knows when to drop deep. He knows when to be in the box. And like, if you look at his two finishes yesterday, he, he's, he's a natural goal scorer. So anyone who gets him is very, very lucky. Um, and what you'll start to see is what Spurs are made of because we won't have Harry Kane papering over cracks. So uh, it's going to be a really interesting summer.